Hey loves, Tony here and welcome to this episode of the Teal Yarn Crafts Podcast. It has been a really long time since we last chatted in this format, but I'm super excited to get back together and kind of share what's been going on in my little corner of the world and find out what's been going on in yours. When we last chatted in February, the world looked very different than it does right now. We are still in the middle of the COVID-19 kind of global pandemic, um, dealing with a lot of things going on here in the States and beyond. Um, so I'm hoping to delve a little bit into that, but also kind of tell you what yarny things I've been getting into. So let's dive right into whips and finished objects. As always, I'm gonna start out with my temperature blanket, which I have right here. Um, I am already a little bit embarrassed to say that I am about a month behind, but she is coming along. Let's see here, here we go. It's a little tough to see the whole thing because she is getting big now. She is getting huge. I think we are all through March ish. We did add some additional colors recently. We added this um, kind of deep bluish green here. We put in this color, which is like kind of a cream, a deep cranberry red. We're pulling in a whole lot more orange now that the weather is heating up. Tons of pink. I think I'm pretty sure that this month marker is for March. So today is we're getting towards the end of June. <laughs> um, but you know what? There will come a day. When I can sit down with a hot mug of tea, I can find something to watch on television and just crank this out. Um, I think last year when I got a few months behind on my temperature blanket, I got really kind of down on myself. I'm like, oh, why did I commit to a year long project? Like, there's no way that I can do that. But honestly, this is the kind of project that I come back to after everything else is done. This is my way to unwind and to do something that is truly just for myself. So when the time comes, I will get caught up on my temperature blanket and I can't wait to keep showing it to you throughout the year. Another project that I recently finished is this guy right here. This is my bright side blanket. So this blanket was created in collaboration with Lion Brand. I have a project that comes out every month with them, but this one is very, very special because uh, when I was originally working on this project, I had different colors planned and then quarantine happened, um, riots started, and I just, I was kind of in my feelings. I was feeling some kind of way and I wanted to kind of express my feelings through craft. It's something that is just really therapeutic for me. So origi the original colors for this were really, really pretty and I'll probably do something with them one day. But I decided to switch to this um, pale gray. This is Pound of Love Elephant Gray, that color. And then uh, to put on the border, I put Basic Stitch Premium in the color Saffron. And the whole idea is that even when we're kind of trudging through the gray, so everything that's happening around anti-racism work, everything that's happening around the uncertainty with COVID, like there's just a lot going on and it's really heavy sometimes. So even though the entire body of this blanket is gray and you feel like you're kind of going through it, it's just a reminder for me and for anybody else who decides to make this project that there's always this lining that we can look forward to. There's always a, a border and outside and other side of whatever happens to be going on that we can be looking forward to. Um, I said in the blog post when I put this together that we can always look forward to the silver lining, but in this case, it's a golden yellow one. So this is the bright side blanket. This is a free pattern that's up on my blog right now. You can get the throw size free on my blog, but if you pick up the PDF copy, you'll get information to make it in 10 different sizes, all the way from security blanket size up to king size. Really excited about this one. Was really excited to kind of wrap this up. I kind of took folks on a journey when I was working on it on Instagram and posted a lot of stories about it because once it kind of started to settle in what this blanket symbolized to me, I wanted to share that with others. So definitely check that out. I put a link to that down in the description. Another project that I recently finished is this one right here. This is the Easy Ripple Pillow. So I will say when I first started this project, I had a lot of reservations for a lot of reasons. It was my first time doing Tunisian crochet chevrons and this yarn is very outside of the typical wheelhouse that I work with. So this is made with Chroma Twist Worsted, which is a newer yarn available from We Crochet and Knit Picks. Um, it's a really lovely wool-based yarn, and it's one of those yarns where the cake transitions on its own. It's got really gentle color transitions, which is awesome. And I use two different colors. So there's this gray color and then this uh, kind of multi-situation. But I wanted to share it here because I haven't been able to do an actual video of this pillow, and we've been using it for about three weeks, I want to say. So I wanted to kind of show how it wears, 
how this yarn wears. It's a little tricky to see. So you can see it's got like a little bit of a halo on it. So it did fuzz up a little bit. And it's not completely covered in cat hair, but Peanut does really love this one. Um, but I think just going over it probably with one of those sweater shaver things will take some of that halo and pilliness off, but it's holding up really, really well and I'm excited. So I can't wait to try that yarn again. This is also a free pattern up on my blog. If you go to toycblog.com and search for the Easy Ripple Pillow, you're gonna find this. It was so fun, it worked up crazy fast. Like I was addicted to this project once I started and I should have known because that's what always happens with Ripple and Chevron projects for me. I mean. They work up so quickly. So I've got a tutorial video for this stitch up on YouTube and then the free pattern itself is on my blog. And now it's time to get into one of my favorite segments. It's time for hashtag yarn love. And I will say with the, the pandemic and everything, I haven't really been leaving the house. So I haven't been buying much and I've been working on a massive project behind the scenes that I can't really talk about just yet. And that has kind of halted any new yarn acquisitions. I haven't been shopping for anything. Some of the yarns that I've been trying to get, um, those updates go really, really quick. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I feel like I can never get the yarn that I want in updates. It just never happens for me. But there is one yarn that I was gifted by some new friends, and this yarn is from a company called, they're Norwegian, and I, I have no idea how to pronounce this. I know I'm going to butcher it. It's Sandness garn so i don't know exactly how to pronounce it i'll put it down here somewhere so you guys can look it up yourselves and of course i'll put a link down in the description for you to find it but this is a really beautiful yarn um they have an entire yarn line of course based out of norway and lucky for us i found out there is a u.s distributor so you don't have to jump through the hoops of trying to get this yarn from norway um they sent me a massive bag of yarn and i shared it in my stories a little while back but there were three particular yarns that stood out to me and i would love to share them with you so the first one is this one right here. It's called Kos, K-O-S, and it's this really beautiful kind of like blown fluffiness. It's a bulky weight alpaca, nylon, and wool blend. It's super duper soft, but it does have a little bit of I don't know, texture and integrity to it. It's not like this fall apart loosey feel of like silk or 100% alpaca, but it does have a really nice softness and I bet it would be amazing for sweaters. So I'll hold it up a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, look at that. I can't get enough. So this is a really beautiful like peachy color with some white in it. It almost feels like if you took sheep just stonewashed and made it out of wool and alpaca, that's what you would have in cost. And I really, really love it. I'm considering getting a bit more of this and making a super luxurious baby blanket with it. Another yarn that I really love from this company is called Alpaca Wool, which I'm guessing means alpaca wool. It's a worsted weight alpaca wool blend. This one is even softer than cost, and I think it would be amazing close to the skin. Um, it does have kind of this rustic texture to it, so it's not like that buttery soft merino wool, but again, it's just got a little bit more bite and I think it just adds extra character to the things that you make out of it. So this is a pretty kind of deep golden color. I mean, look at her. Oh, she is shining in the sunlight and I adore it. I think this would be great for any kind of wearable. So I'm thinking sweaters, cardigans, even like a really nice shawl or something you're going to wear around your neck or face would be great for this. It's kind of kind of like a medium twist to it. So it's gonna have some really, really good drape. And I think the alpaca in here is just so luxurious and it's gonna feel great on your skin. And last but not least is this one here. It's called Duo and it is a merino wool and cotton blend. Now I'm not really familiar with that kind of blend together. So this was a new one for me and I was pleasantly surprised. I might be the only crocheter that doesn't really like cotton yarn. So mixing it with a little bit of merino just Took it over the edge for me. Like it's absolutely perfect. This feels like the kind of yarn that could become a staple in my closet. Uh, I think the cotton gives it that really good integrity and strong stitch definition. And the merino wool just makes it incredibly soft and squishy. So this is a nice pale pink color. Oh. I am absolutely in love with this. And I think this is the kind of thing that could become anything. I could make kitchen supplies out of this. I could make wearables. I could make baby things. I could do amigurumi with this even, which honestly, now that I think about it, this will make a really cute bunny. I don't know. I, I'm, I wouldn't say I have baby fever per se, but every time I look at yarn, I'm like, oh, I want to make baby things. <laughs> 
it's just because they're so fast and they're so easy and they always come out so cute. I mean, how can you deny it? Like, that's how I feel. So I might try and get my hands on a little bit more duo and do something fun with that. So as I mentioned, there is a U.S. distributor for the Sandness Garn yarn line. If you look up Mother Knitter, so M-O-T-H-E-R-K-N-I-T-T-E-R dot com, I believe, and that takes you to um, a web page where you can shop all of these yarns plus more from the Sandness Garn collection and get them shipped directly to your door. Uh, I know that when I requested these yarns uh, from, I guess, their Norway distribution center. I'm not exactly sure where it came from. It took a little while to get here. It was a little tricky to figure out how I could even shop for it. And like a lot of these companies, they don't sell direct. So having a U.S. distributor really, really helps you to be able to be accessible to these yarns and also be able to try them out without having to wait months down the line when you place a larger order. So I hope you guys will check that out. I know I'm going to have a whole lot of fun with these yarns. Now, I know we're in the middle of hashtag yarn love, but I just could not wait to tell you guys a little bit more about these new hooks that I got. Now, I never thought that I was a green person, but when Furls came out with their Lime Odyssey hooks, I was like, you know what? Grab some lime green and put some gold glitter on it, and Tony is a happy girl. Like, I am really, really loving these hooks. It took a little bit of getting used to as far as the Odysseys because they are a little bit heavier. But once I got my groove going, I find I actually crochet faster with these because I have large hands, so they wrap around these perfectly. My thumb wants to be all up in the mix, so the long neck really helps out a lot with my thumb placement. And since a lot of my crocheting is like from my elbow and from my wrist, uh, just the weight of this hook helps me move really fluidly through my project. So I was really excited to try these out. Now, if you haven't tried the Odysseys or any other Furls products, now is a really, really good time because they are celebrating their birthday. And on top of having a massive sale, they are also doing daily giveaways. On the day that I am recording this, they're doing a giveaway with five streamlined hooks and a carrying case. And I think added up together, I mean, that is a pretty nice haul. So you can check those out on the Furls website. I put links directly to the giveaway page down in the description. And like I said, they're having a massive sale. For the entirety of their birthday celebration, you can get 25% off of their whole site. The whole thing. That is nuts. They have so many products. Of course, they have tons of hook lines. I personally am a big fan of the swirls, the cookies and cream, if I can get them, uh, the Odysseys, the, the candy shop hooks. They have so many different hooks, but they also have hook accessories and other things that we crocheters absolutely love. So make sure you check that out. You can use the link that's down in the description to head over to Furls and make sure you use that code FURLSDAY25. And lastly, I'm excited to share that I am one of the designers in the June Knit Crate. So Knit Crate is a monthly subscription box for knitters and crocheters. You receive yarn, a knit project, and a crochet project to use with the yarn, and some kind of extra goodie. So for this Knit Crate feature, of course, I had to go the Tunisian crochet route, and I was really excited to hear that Knit Crate has never had a Tunisian crochet pattern. So for the very first time, you'll get to be able to try out a Knit Crate pattern, Knit Crate yarn using Tunisian crochet, which I think is is huge. The pattern I designed is called the Getaway Shawl and it's this really beautifully textured but lightweight triangle wrap. So it starts off with just a few stitches. The main body of it is Tunisian simple stitch but it does have some basic increases, decreases, and it uses the Tunisian pearl stitch. Since this was the first Tunisian crochet project in a knit crate, I wanted to keep it pretty simple but still make something that was fun to make that was exciting to watch it work up and was really a joy to wear. I personally had to send, of course, my sample to Knit Crate to take photos, but I do have some yarn left over, so I'm planning to make another one for myself. Now, if you're not already signed up for Knit Crate, of course, I put a link down in the description for you to check it out, and you can use code TLYARN20 to get 20% off your first box. I really hope you'll try it out. I personally have been receiving Knit Crate for probably the better part of a year, and I really enjoy it. I like trying different yarns because they switch up the yarn weights and the yarn bases each time. I love playing around with different colors that maybe I wouldn't buy for myself, and I really like trying out patterns from other designers. Huge thanks to my friends at Knit Crate for giving me a chance to do this. I kind of had it on my like crafty bucket list to design for them eventually, so I'm glad that it worked out. And I hope you'll click that link down below to try out Knit Crate for yourself. And now it's time to jump into my favorite things. So with quarantine going on, and even with having this big project going on in the background, I have had an opportunity to kind of indulge in some of the things that I like to do. One of which, of course, is reading specifically audiobooks. Now I get asked all the time how I listen to my audiobooks, and I actually get them free through the Libby app, which is associated with my library. 
library. So if you're here in the States, I definitely encourage you to look into your library, see if they allow you to check out audiobooks for free from Libby because I did Audible, but I, I just wasn't reading the books fast enough to justify the monthly cost. And honestly, I don't mind waiting for a book to be available for my library. The most recent book that I read is called Queenie, written by Candace Cardi Williams. It's a novel centered around a woman named Queenie living in the UK. Now, Queenie has a lot of problems. Um, she has, she's going through a breakup. She is engaging in a lot of casual sex that she really like is completely meaningless for her. She's got a ton of issues going on at work, a lot of derision between her and her friends. Her and her family don't seem to get along. Like every facet of this girl's life is a challenge. Um, but it's a really beautiful story of her kind of trudging through that mess and then coming to understand that hey, there's kind of something going on with me and maybe I need to take a little time to focus on myself and my mental health. Now, mental health is a very tricky subject, especially in the Black community. And I can't imagine what it's like for somebody like Queenie who comes from Jamaican roots who've now transplanted into this other country. The customs and the beliefs and the understandings around mental health are just completely different as you transcend the generations. And Queenie is just trying to better understand where she is in life. So I'm about 75% through the book. Um, she's finally gotten to the point where she's decided to go get therapy, which is very frowned upon by her grandmother. But I'm just, I'm kind of like a wary cheerleader. I'm like, come on, Queenie, you got this. But then it's like, she'll stumble and I'm like, okay, we're going to try again. Like, <laughs> I really want to root for her. And, and I have no idea how this book is going to end up. And those are my favorite kind of books to read. This isn't a coming of age story, but in to a degree it is because she's starting to understand herself a little bit better, what her needs are and what she's really looking for out of life. So I'm really excited to finish up this book um, and then move on to the next one. I'll put a link down below to this book on Amazon for you to check it out. But I definitely encourage you to look into your library and see if you can get the audio book. In addition to books, I am of course watching all the things and I recently finished the third season of Marcella. Now, mm, 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 mm. apparently I have a thing for women going through like severe mental health issues because Marcella is like the most insane story. It's been the craziest series that I've watched in a really long time. And honestly, after season two was done, I felt like I was checking Netflix almost daily or weekly to see if the third season was up yet. Now, without giving too much away, Marcella centers around a woman named Marcella. <laughs> Uh, who is a detective somewhere in the UK and she's really really good at her job but she also has like these blackouts where she gets very violent and then she doesn't remember it and sometimes it works against her sometimes people work it against her it's just I really don't want to give too much away but it's a really really good story it's dark uh, but it is great for anybody who has a thing for like crime dramas who really likes the idea of navigating mental health in these fictional characters. Uh, my husband and I watched season three together. I watched one and two on my own and he was hooked. It was like at the end of every episode, he's like, okay, we can fit one more. I was like, actually, no, it's like midnight and we need to go to sleep. Now I will say I found that season three was my favorite, but it does really help to watch it from season one straight through. You kind of watch this progression as she dives deeper into her mental health issues. And a lot of it centers around a tragedy that happened in her household. So I would strongly encourage you to check that out. At least throw it up on the list and watch a few episodes and see if you like Marcella. And the last thing I'm going to mention here in my favorite things is my new favorite water bottle which is this massive girl right here do i have a thing for pink perhaps i don't know this is my brand new one gallon water bottle so i've been trying to commit over the last several years to drink more water and uh under the direction of my doctor he encouraged me to just start drinking more like make a point of it so i got this bad boy off of amazon and what i really like about it is got these kind of encouraging <laughs> words on the side so like it starts off at 7 a.m and says good morning like you need to be up by 7 a.m. and start drinking your water. I'm like, wow, that seems like a really, really early time to be drinking water, but okay. Uh, let's see. 1 p.m. says keep chugging. 5 p.m. says don't give up. And 9 p.m. says you did it. Now, I will say the very first day was a struggle uh, getting an entire gallon down, but I got it down. And I'm sure the next question is how many times did you go to the bathroom? And the answer is a lot and a lady doesn't share those kinds of things, but just know it was more than normal, okay? But as the weeks kind of went on, it got a lot more manageable. It got a lot easier. I almost felt like I was thirstier, 
like when I didn't have more water and kind of talked to my daughter, my doctor about it. And he suggested that I make sure I'm getting in some electrolytes and make sure I'm eating properly too. Because, you know, if you're just continuing to feel thirsty after drinking this much water, that's kind of an issue. And while this last time says 9 p.m., if I drink water at 9 p.m., I promise you I will be up at like midnight handling some business. So I try my best to be done around six so that uh, when it's time for me to actually go to sleep, I can do that soundly and comfortably. I might have like a cup of tea before I go to sleep. But I really like this water bottle. It's a it's a really good reminder to stay hydrated. Um, I have found that just being in the house a lot and working as hard as I do as a designer, I really don't take super great care of myself. I spend so much time in front of a computer. If I'm not in front of the computer, I'm sitting down crocheting. If I'm not sitting down crocheting, I'm running errands. So doing something as simple as getting enough water in has to start becoming a priority for me. And that's really what I'm trying to do. So if you find that you need a little bit more water or a lot more water in your life, I'll put a link down in the description for you to pick up this water bottle for yourself. And now we have come to open floor, which is just a chance for me to chit chat about whatever I'm feeling at the time. So like I mentioned, I'm a crochet designer, so I spend a lot of time on the computer and there are certain apps and computer programs that I use a lot in my business. So I wanted to share just a few of those with you. The first app that I use all the time and absolutely need for my business is called Canva. Canva is a web-based graphic design tool. So I use that a lot to create pins for my blog posts, to create cover images, to crop images, to create cover art for my YouTube channel. Like I use it for anything visual that I need to create. And I absolutely love it because it's really reasonably priced. I wanna say it's maybe 13 bucks a month and you get a lot of power in this tool. One of the things that I've been looking for high and low is a way to very easily crop the background out of my photos. I was not about to learn how to use Photoshop. It's just not for me. But Canva just instituted a tool that allows you to remove backgrounds with one click, super easy, one click to remove backgrounds. It's not 100% accurate and that's okay, but it really helps if I take a photo against a white background, I can take that background out and then just kind of put myself wherever I want in my image. Another web application that I'm really excited about is called Flowdesk. Now Flowdesk is an email list management system, but it's like a bare bones version, but beautified. Now before Flowdesk, I was on another email list system called MailChimp. Now I really liked MailChimp, I was on there for years, but the issue is that the more subscribers you get, the higher the price goes. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But once you get to a certain point, it's almost like you're penalized for your success, even if you're still a one woman show. And that was really how I was starting to feel. I think I was paying at the end, maybe like 120 bucks a month for MailChimp. And there were some months that I wasn't even sending a newsletter. So I was like, okay, I need to find a better solution. And that was Flowdesk. And what's awesome about it is that right now I pay $19 a month because I found a code and I will put a code down below but even without a code Flowdesk is $39 flat regardless of how many emails you sent regardless of how many subscribers that you have it really doesn't even matter and I love that because you can continue to grow and experiment and try different things you can have really busy seasons and really low activity seasons and it doesn't affect the price at all so it's a really reasonable price if you're on my email list which I think you should be because it's actually a really good newsletter. But if you're on my email list, you've seen the change in kind of my old newsletters and my new ones. They're a lot cleaner. Um, the links work really well. Uh, it's fast, it's responsive. It's just, it's just better in general. And I love it from the user perspective and I hope you love it um, as the receiver. So Flowdesk is really awesome, especially if you have a small business and don't have too much coin sitting around. Another service that I use a lot is actually Pinterest. As a visual person, Person, as somebody who runs a business that's very visual, it's important for me to be on a platform that gets those photos and gets those concepts in front of as many people as possible. And Pinterest, especially being free, is one of the most powerful tools that you can use. So I have a blog, so it makes sense for me to create pins for each one of my blog posts and post them up on Pinterest. There are tons of different strategies to make Pinterest the most effective for you, but I do know they recently kind of changed how they rewarded certain pins. So before it used to be, the more repins, the better. It gets more people on your page. That's great. Now they've kind of switched it up to where you're rewarded for putting new content up on their um, platform as often as possible. So before, I used to have like one pin and it would do exceedingly well and I would maybe repost that pin every three to six months and that was totally fine. Now they want you to 
post new pins on a regular basis. So all I've changed now is that when I go into Canva, which is the graphic design app, I have several different templates for the types of pins that I like to create. So instead of creating maybe two or three pins for a blog post, I'll create eight or nine and I'll schedule them in a service called Tailwind so they'll go up regularly without me having to sit in front of the computer every single day. I think what I love best about Pinterest is that unlike something like Instagram or Facebook, it is not a social media platform. It is truly a search engine, somewhat like Google. So when somebody goes onto Pinterest, they're not going on there just to scroll through their home feed. They're going on there to find something. So by using strong SEO, by using um, long tail keywords, by you know getting that lingo going, getting the understanding of how this platform works, you can have major success. Now, I'm still chipping away at all the things that I've recently learned about Pinterest, but I've already seen the payoff and it's getting eyes on my blog. It's getting people making my products and you know, it's, it's making it so that I can continue doing this full time. So if you're not investing your time, maybe a little bit of your money in Pinterest, I strongly, strongly encourage it. So those are just a few of the sites that I like to use to run my business. I have a full blog post of 12 different apps and websites that I use to run Teal Yarn Crafts, and you can check that out on my blog, tlycblog.com. I really love the open floor segment of the podcast. It's just a chance for me to chit chat about whatever I'm feeling, but I definitely encourage you guys, if you have certain questions or things that you wanna know about me or my business or social media or running a blog or design or anything like that, definitely pop those questions down in the comments. I would love to pull up a few comments over the next few months and kind of share what you guys are wondering about in open floor as well. And now it's time for pattern spotlight. And this month I'm excited to share the spotlight on a few different patterns. So you might remember from one of my previous videos, I decided to celebrate my birthday in collaboration with my friends from Lion Brand to raise some money for some really important causes. So Lion Brand is selling my summertime tank, my daydream shawl, and my sandbar cardi on their website. And 100% of the sales of those patterns is going to the George Floyd Memorial fun. In addition, I'm selling those same patterns on Ravelry and my website tlyarncrafts.com and 100% of the sales of those patterns is going to Movement for Black Lives. Here's a little bit more info about those three patterns. First is the summertime tank. This mesh sleeveless top is perfect for keeping your cool when the weather heats up. The relaxed neckline and ribbing accents make the piece look intentional without being fussy. A lightweight cotton yarn like Lion Brand's Comfy Cotton really brings out the special qualities in this fun piece. Next is the Daydream Shawl, a Tunisian crochet textured wrap with fringe for days. I had so much fun designing this piece and have made several for friends as gifts. It's great if you're looking to try Tunisian crochet for the first time, and I even have a full video tutorial to help you along the way. And finally, this is the Sandbar Cardi. You will be the queen of comfy chic when you slip into this lightweight mesh cardigan. Made using mercerized cotton, this piece will stand the test of time and will always have a place in your casual wardrobe. In addition to those three patterns, I decided to add my bright side blanket to the fundraiser. So 100% of sales of that pattern on my website and Ravelry are also going to Movement for Black Lives. Now I took a look at the recent numbers and I am honestly blown away. I wasn't sure how this was going to go over, but you guys just, you showed up. So the original goal for this fundraiser was $1,500. And I just want to make sure I get the number right because I wrote it down. We are currently at $5,130. My mind is literally blown. I am just so grateful to every single one of you who picked up one of these patterns. And that's just sales from Ravelry and my website. Lion Brand, I was just so grateful to partner with them because they have this massive platform and they've done a great job of promoting um, this fundraiser. So I have no idea where they're at for the George Floyd Memorial Fund, but I can't say enough how much I appreciate every single one of you who have picked up a pattern already, picked up one, picked picked up three, picked up four, whatever you did already to support this cause, I appreciate. I also have to give a lot of love to my friends Ashley E and Doug P, both of which donated directly to these funds in honor of my birthday. I just, I really don't have any words. The generosity that this community has shown, the action that we have taken, and the stand that we have taken to say that we will not live in a world where racism exists, it just, it really touches my heart and I'm grateful for it. So we do still have a couple more days in June, so these promotions are still going on. So I put links down below for you to pick up these
these patterns on my website or Lion Brand's website. Support either. It really doesn't matter to me. I'm just super excited that we can continue to raise funds for these important causes. As sales continue through the rest of June, I'll be sure to keep an eye on the numbers and I will be sharing what our final total was in my stories on Instagram early next month. And we're going to finish things up with my final word, which is just a note of encouragement to take you through the rest of your day on a lighter note. Now, typically the final word is very lighthearted. It's very happy and very cheerful and encouraging. Um, but today, I don't know. I might strike a little bit of a nerve because today's final word is that allyship is not a social media campaign. Now, I spent a lot of time on Instagram and I was really excited and encouraged to see a ton of my white friends and followers talking about how they were getting involved in anti-racism work. Many of them talked about listening, unpacking their biases, talking to their friends and family about racism, and all of that is super duper important. But now that a lot of the hype around the protest has died down, I just challenge everybody out there to stay vigilant. Sharing posts and stories on social media is a really great place to start, but there's still so much to do when it comes to anti racism and a lot of that work is stuff that people on your platforms will never see. Allies are important to every movement but we need you to continue. Continue listening. Continue amplifying black voices. Continue speaking up when you witness injustice and make sure you don't get discouraged when you inevitably make a mistake. Just remember that we as black people we don't have the luxury of getting complacent and we really can't afford for you to get complacent either. If you're looking for resources to begin or continue your anti anti-racism work, I've got several down in the description to help you. And I'm also leaving the comments open in hopes that we can have a respectful dialogue around this conversation. Just know that phrases like all lives matter will not be tolerated. And if you don't know why that's problematic, don't worry, I've got some links down there for you too. So that is it for this episode of the Teal Yarn Crafts podcast. I just want to thank you guys so much for continuing to rock with me through this. It's been a little bit bumpy. 2020 just kind of threw me a curveball, but I'm really excited to be back. And I hope you'll join me next month for another episode. Sending big love to my mom and my dad and to you. And I'll see you next time.